Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Shane with Guys of Magic, and today I'm joined by Steven. Say what's up, dude. Hey, guys. And today we're going to go over your $300 edition for Enduring Enchantments. Isn't that right, Steven? That is right, Shane. Hell yeah, dude. Well, you had a great 100. This is going to be a sequel to that. So before we jump in anything, would you like to just go over the commander, talk about what the deck does, and then we'll go into your ads? Yeah, Shane, so I did keep Anakthea, Hand of Erebos, for the commander of this deck. Narcy, Fable Singer is the extra commander you could kind of swap out. Uh, we're not doing a bunch of Saga stuff, really. So Narcy is a great Saga commander in this abs and color scheme, but it is not something that I kind of wanted to keep in the deck. So Anakthea is in, Narcy is out. Uh, Anakthea is fantastic in this deck. We've done some playtesting. We, we did our $100 battle, and it was amazing. I loved everything this deck could do. <laughs> yeah, I did not love this deck, but it was great to play against. Before we jump into your new additions for 300, let's go ahead and pop up the $100 additions on the screen right now. These are all the cards that you added to your $100 list. I'm guessing you liked them a lot. You're bringing them over, so they're going to be in the deck. So this is going to be your sequel. So let's just jump into it. Talk to me about some of the creatures you're adding for this upgrade. So not a lot of creatures. I did add one, although it is a big one. So this is Nyx Bloom Ancient. This is four and three green for an enchantment creature elemental. It's a five, five with trample. But although that is fun, the best thing about this card is that if you tap a permanent four mana, it produces three times as much of that mana instead. With Anakthea out, when it enters the battlefield, if this is in our graveyard, we're getting a 3-3 zombie instead, but we're also tapping for an aggressive amount of mana. Uh, this was an amazing include to add to the $300 list, and I love it with all my heart. Yeah, this target for reanimation is kind of stupid, dude. It's like, I'm never gonna, you're never going to play that aggressive mana across the top. You're just like, ah, I'm going to bring it back, and then now, yeah, I'm going to have a billion mana. I mean, yeah, I did notice that anytime you do like a three color deck, the mana base isn't like overly aggressive. So you don't have to worry about like mana fixing too much. Uh, this just really makes it so when you do play this card, you can tap for a crap ton of mana. Not only that, but there is a ton of card draw in this deck to where the point that when you're playing these cards, you're drawing a ton. And then with all that extra mana, you're playing extra and then you're drawing more and then you're playing more and then you're drawing more. It's just a beautiful loop. It just sounds like a very fun loop and a very mean loop if you're playing against it. But let's jump into what the deck really cares about. Talk to me about some of these enchantments you're adding, dude. Yes. So obviously this is an enchantment themed deck. We have a ton of enchantments that are in this deck already. I did add seven beautiful enchantments. First one I want to talk about is Greater Oromancy. This is one and a white for an enchantment. Other enchantments you control have Shroud. Enchantment creatures you control have Shroud. This is nuts, right? So we have Sterling Grove that we added from the $100 list. These two cards together present what's called a lock on the board uh, to where you can't target anything on my side of the board. So you want to exile something? No. You want to destroy something? No. Unless you have a board wipe or a farewell, I'm probably going to win. Yeah, you need that board wipe, like you said. That's really mean, dude. I. I think we saw a little bit of something like that on your 100. I don't want to spoil anything, obviously. We saw a little, like, taste of this kind of thing, and it was not nice. Next up, we do have Aura Shards. This is one, a green, and a white for an enchantment. Whenever a creature comes into play under your control, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. Well, Shane, here's the thing, buddy. I yeah. want to play stuff, and when you have stuff on your field, I'm not a big fan of it. So you're going to destroy my rocks and my other things? I'm going to destroy absolutely everything I can. Mm. This card seems problematic in your deck. Uh, it is very problematic. We do still have a ton of creatures that come into play. I think the best thing about this card is, is you don't have to cast those creatures. So it really works extremely well with Anakthea to the point where you are just playing those creatures. They come onto the field and it triggers aura shards. This is going to be a menace. Yeah, that might be a kill on site. Next up, we have Karmic Justice. This is two and a white for another enchantment. Whenever a spell or ability an opponent controls destroys a non-creature permanent you control, you may destroy target permanent that opponent controls. This card is great in an enchantment deck. You want to destroy one of my things? Sure, go ahead and do that. Just know when you do that, 
I might take out one of your lands. Yeah, this insurance policy is not nice. I think I'm going to have to target this one first. That's for sure. Here's the best part about it. You target this, and I still get to destroy one of your things. Yeah, if you're no, no matter what, you're getting two for one, it sounds like. I don't like that. Yeah, there's tons of value on this card, and not only does this come down really cheap at three mana, but even when Anakthea comes out and this is in your graveyard, this is still going to provide so much value for you. Next up, we have Defense of the Heart. This is three and a green. During your upkeep, if one of your opponents controls three or more creatures, sacrifice Defense of the Heart, search your library for up to two creature cards, and put those creatures into play, shuffle your library afterward. Four mana, my opponents, especially if somebody's playing Slivers, mm -hmm. <laughs> has three or more creatures. At my upkeep, I don't even have to do anything. This just goes off, and then I'm just digging for two of my best creatures to put on the board. And then even if you destroy them, they're probably going to be enchantment creatures, and I'm just going to bring them back. Yeah, this kind of seems like it's it's going to count towards your enchantment, like max enchantments, right? I feel like your deck cares about a certain amount of enchantments, so it's going to count for one of those. And then when your opponents just play magic, this is going to do something else. Like, that's pretty nuts. Yeah, I just, I love this card in general for four mana. It just sits on the field, and I just need my opponents to literally do what you said, Shane. Just play magic, and yep. it's going to provide value. Mean. Speaking of value, if you get too much value and you decide to start swinging at me, uh, next up we have Grave Pack. This is one and three black for an enchantment. Whenever creature you control dies, each other player sacrifices a creature. This is on the field. I have my 3-3 three, three zombies that Anakthea is making. You want to destroy something because you don't like what it does? Well, I mean, everybody's going to have to do a little bit of sacking. Dude, I can only imagine this and Karmic Justice on the field at the exact same time. That could just be like double the meanness if there's a kill spell or something. Yeah, I um, <laughs> when I was building the 300, I really did think about how could I make everyone hate me the most? <laughs> and this is we're here hey so when you get targeted first there's no crying in baseball you you're making your bed dude listen man i've made my bed too many times at this point so i can't cry at all okay speaking of crying uh next up we have smothering tithe this is three and a white whenever an opponent draws a card that player may pay two if the player doesn't i create a treasure token so literally for like you said earlier playing the game I'm going to start creating some treasures, unless you pay your taxes. But hey, most Steven. of the time, people don't pay their taxes. Hey, Steven. Shane? You want to pay the two? I do not. <laughs> you make that treasure. That. I hate hearing that. Oh, I mean, to be honest with you, if there was blue in this commander, I would add risk study just to ask, do you want to pay the one? Do you want to pay the two? Uh, uh, duh. Of course you'd put it, yeah. Uh, but smothering tithe in any kind of white deck... Uh, obviously, you know, this deck is kind of mana intensive to a certain extent because Anakthea might be removed a couple times because of how good the value engine is there when she attacks or when she ETBs. So having those extra treasures is definitely going to help us out. But just in case we don't get those treasures, we have some beautiful safety. Uh, hashtag pillow fort. Uh, sphere of safety is included in this deck upgrade for four and a white. Creatures can't attack you or a Planeswalker you control unless their controller pays X for each of those creatures, where X is the number of enchantments you control. Uh, not a super expensive addition to this deck, but in any enchantment theme deck, this is probably a automatic include. Uh, even if this is a creature that Anakthea brings back as a 3-3 zombie, if I have a ton of enchantments on the field, which, shocker, this deck does produce a lot of enchantments on the field, opponents can't really attack me. I was going to say, you, you hit a certain critical mass of enchantments and you just become unattackable. And that's where I'm trying to get to. Yeah, Steven, uh, I really like those enchantments. Those are going to be great in your 300. Uh, I was already afraid of your 100. I'm going to be afraid of your 300, dude. So, you got through the creature, you got through your enchantments. Did you touch any of the lands for this deck upgrade? I did touch the land base a little bit. Now, the land base in the deck, like I said, was pretty good. But with having a decent budget, I did add a decent amount of lands into this. So I actually added six lands to this. So first up, I do want to talk about Urza Saga. We're an enchantment deck. This is an enchantment land. It's an automatic include. 
Uh, there's not a lot of artifacts in the deck that this can grab, but the one that it can grab is Soul Ring. And to be honest with you, anything that grab me is Soul Ring because I'm not lucky like a lot of people. I don't get Soul Ring in my opening hand. Uh, always an include. I don't know what you're talking about, Steven. You get Soul Ring almost every time I play you. I don't know what you're talking about, Shane. I don't. But Urza Saga, this has three chapters. Chapter one gains tap, add a colorless. Chapter two, you can tap it. Pay two, you create a zero, zero. Colorless construct uh, gets plus one, plus one for each artifact you control. We don't really care about that. We're looking at chapter three, baby. Search your library for an artifact card with mana value zero or one. Put that card onto the battlefield and shuffle. So literally, you're playing this, you're adding the colorless, and then by the time you get to chapter three, you're bringing that soul ring right out, baby. Seems good to me, man. I did add three of the shock lands. I went ahead and added Temple Garden, Overgrown Tomb, and Godless Shrine. They all tap for their respective color of the deck. So Temple Garden is a white or a green. Overgrown Tomb is a black or a green. And Godless Shrine is a white or a black. Uh, these will come into the battlefield tapped unless you pay two life. Uh, shocker. <laughs> pun intended. We are shocking these in for two life. Yep. Whenever I have these, if I have these laying around in my collection, their auto includes for all my upgrades as well. And I did add one fetch land and one triome. I added Marsh Flats, and then I also added Endatha Triome. Marsh Flats, you can pay one life, tap it. You can sack it. Search your library for a Plains or a Swamp card. And then Endatha Triome, you can go ahead and put that onto the battlefield tap. But it does include those basic land types, Plains, Swamp, or Forest. You can search for this with Marsh Flats, which is really cool. I know some people might be like, well, why didn't you include the other fetch lands? To be honest with you, I'm okay with just having a shock. I pretty much got rid of a lot of the enters the battlefield tap lands or reveal a certain type of card in order to have this land come into the battlefield untapped. So that's kind of why I mess with the land base a little bit like I did. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. Nowadays, I feel like it's so much easier to add these fetch lands in. They're really coming down in price. Like that Marsh Flats, that's under 10 bucks nowadays. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Is that your is that your three hundred additions, dude? Those are all the additions for the three hundred dollar list. Yes, I love it. I'm not gonna love it when I play against it, but I love to see them. But now we get to the part that everyone here loves. You added some cool cards. Let's talk about some of the things you had to cut, make room for those cool cards. But before we get into the new cuts, let's just throw up on screen all the cuts that we had from your one hundred dollar list. So since we are adding all those cards from your one hundred, we're also gonna be adding all those cuts from the one hundred. If anyone's watching this and they want to see a more in-depth explanation of why Steven cut what he did, in the description down below, you can find a link. Watch his 100. Check out why he's cutting these cards. But this is the 300, so let's talk about these cuts, bud. Yeah, so first up, let's go ahead and talk about the only creature cut. So I did add one creature for the 300. I did get rid of one creature for the 300 as well. So Mesa Enchantress, this is one and two white for a creature human druid. It's a zero two. And then whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you may draw a card. So here's the thing, right? So this deck has so much card draw in it already, whether it's a creature or an enchantment. I didn't really find the need for this card. Uh, this is just kind of one of those cuts that's a little bit tough because honestly, I mean, I know everyone's going to love this card. Uh, I just... I needed to get rid of something, so this is kind of one of those cards. Yeah, in our 100 deck, dude, you drew so many cards, so I don't think you're going to need this card as much. Yeah, and then to be honest with you, the one card that allowed me to draw that many was a creature, but it was just one card. So just having so many card draw outlets, although it is great, it kind of let me be able to play around with the deck a little bit and kind of cut some certain things. So, I mean, it wasn't that big of an issue, you know? Plus, it's not an enchantment creature exactly that was the only creature card i did cut i'm pretty much going to get straight into the enchantments that i cut out of this deck uh so i'm going to go ahead and just apologize ahead of time for anything that you guys may have really liked uh first one that i'm pretty sure that you guys are going to comment on is probably boon of the spirit realm this is three and two white this is an enchantment with constellation whenever it or another enchantment enters the battlefield under my control put a blessing counter on it and then creatures I control get plus one, plus one for each blessing counter on Boon of the Spirit Realm. So here's the thing about this card. It is really cool and really great. I did notice that I wasn't really doing a lot of attacking with this deck. It was more of like pillow 40 and kind of getting like setting up the board to where I wanted it to be. 
Uh, this was one of those cards where I didn't really care if my cards were huge. It just kind of made the cut pretty much towards the end. Yeah, I get that. Kind of helps you lay low. Won't be targeted by your other opponents. Mm-hmm. Next up is Battle for Bredegard. This is one, a green and a white for a saga. Chapter one, create a 1-1 one, one white human warrior creature token. Chapter two, create a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token. Chapter three, choose any number of artifact tokens and or creature tokens you control with different names. For each of them, create a token that's a copy of it. So this is a great saga for this deck. Uh, pretty much for each token that Anakthiac makes, you can make a copy of it. I understand why this is in the deck. I didn't really find the need for it. I feel like Anakthea did everything it needed to. I didn't really need the populate theme or making token copies of the tokens. So this was a cut for me. I feel that, dude. Next up on the chopping block, I did add cutting rhetoric. This is two and a black. Whenever an opponent attacks you and or one or more planeswalkers you control, exile the top card of that player's library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled and mana of any type can be spent to cast it. Obviously, we added Sphere of Safety to the deck. This is a great card, don't get me wrong. I actually really enjoy this card. I actually kind of think this is a little Staxi, even for being a black card. Uh, with that being said, although it is kind of impactful, a lot of the times opponents aren't going to hesitate to attack you, so this is kind of one of those cards I got rid of. This card will not stop me as much as Sphere of Safety, for sure. Especially because you're going to be playing cards from my deck or somebody else's deck. They won't even be, you know, enchantments. I feel like this kind of doesn't really stick with what your deck wants to do. So, makes sense. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. This card is really cool. Uh, although it will probably stop you because that top deck might be something you really want to play in the future. You don't really know because obviously it's on the top of your deck. That's true, too. But, you know, I, it's just for the play style of the deck. Although it is really cool, really fun. It just it had to make the cut. Now we have Kalani Heart Expedition. This is one in a green. It has landfall, and then whenever a land enters the battlefield under my control, I may put a quest counter on it, and then I can remove three quest counters, uh, and I sack it, search my library for the two basic land cards, put them on the battlefield tap, then shuffle. This is a cool card. I like the fact that it is pretty much to the point. Uh, late game, this does absolutely nothing in my mind. Um, just because, you know, landfall late game is kind of pointless. Uh, early game, this is pretty solid if you have the lands in hand. But this kind of being a target for Anakthea was kind of pointless for me. I didn't really care for this. Obviously, there are so many great enchantments that I'd rather bring back from the graveyard instead of this. Yeah, this is a very slow ramp card in my opinion. Next up, I did get rid of both of the omens in the deck. I got rid of Omen of the Hunt, which is two and a green. And then Omen of the Sun, which is two and a white. Omen of the Hunt, when it enters the battlefield and has flash, uh, you can search your library for a basic land card, put that card on the battlefield tap, then shuffle. You can sack it, then scry two. Omen of the Sun also has flash. When it enters the battlefield, you create two 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens, and you gain two life, which is kind of cool, I guess. Uh, you can pay two and a white. You can sack it, then scry two. These cards are really cool. Uh, I don't really feel like they add too much value to the deck. Omen of the Hunt would be the one card I would prefer. I like Ramp in any kind of deck that's kind of doing a lot of stuff. Uh, so this is a card that I would put back into the deck. But to be honest with you, this is a $300 upgrade. This had to get the cut. Yeah, these those two enchantments just kind of seem like they're there to kind of get to the, the magic number of seven, maybe. Not the, great, not the greatest. Exactly. And the last enchantment to get the cut here is going to be the Binding of the Titans. This is one and a green. First chapter here says each player mills three cards. Second chapter says exile up to two target cards from graveyards. For each creature card exiled this way, you may gain one life. And chapter three says return target creature or land card from your graveyard to your hand. So a little graveyard or hate here uh, for anyone that might be playing Slivers. Cough, cough with Encore. <laughs> cough, cough. Uh, really great card. I just, I mean, I understand us milling three cards helps us get stuff into our graveyard to trigger Anakthea when she attacks or enters the battlefield. We have enough ways to do that in the deck already. Uh, I didn't really care for bringing something back from our graveyard to our hand. If it were to come onto the battlefield, I can understand the effect a little bit more. 
Obviously, this is two mana, so it won't have that effect. It's a little bit cheap for that kind of effect. It was a pretty easy cut for me. Plus, you got your commander to do the same thing, but better. Exactly. All right, and those are all the enchantments, right? So let's see. You added some lands. Are you going to cut any lands to make room for them? Oh, I'm going to definitely cut some lands, baby. So I did get rid of two of the Snarls. I got rid of Necro Blossom Snarl, and then I also got rid of Shine Shadow Snarl. Uh, both of these tap for either a green or a black, or a white and a black. And they do enter the battlefield tapped unless you reveal a Swamp or Forest card for the Necro Blossom, or a Plains or Swamp for the Shine Shadow Snarl. Uh, I hate tap lands. Uh, the chances of me having those Plains, Swamp, Swamp Forest in hand although pretty, you know, could happen. I just, I, I hate tap lands, so pretty easy cuts for me. Yeah, why chance it, dude? Yep. I also got rid of Sungrass Prairie. I love the filter aspect here, but it confuses me. I'm not going to lie to you. I know that sounds weird, but <laughs> just filter lands and magic just really freak me out. I don't know why. I mean, it makes sense if you're not having just, like, the three colors, maybe, but you you can get the three. You're fine. Next on the chopping block, I got rid of Tainted Wood. This taps for a colorless or it can tap for a swamp or a forest. You can activate this only if you control a swamp. I put in the shock lands, so I didn't really care for this. I also got rid of Temple of Silence, although I do love scrying, and this will kind of let me know what I might be drawing into. Again, this is a $300 upgrade. We're trying to figure out powerful deck, so went ahead and got rid of this. Anything coming in tapped, slowing me down, does not need to be in this deck to slow me down. And the last land I got rid of was the Sand Steep Citadel. Uh, this land will tap for all of our colors, whether it's a white, a black, or a green, but it enters the battlefield tapped. If I have to put a tap land in any one of my decks, Shane, it's going to be a tri land. And I added that, so I cut this one. A tri land with the land types on it, yes. Much, much better. Exactly. All right, right on, Steven. Is that all the cuts as well for your 300? Those are all the cuts, my friend. Nice. Well, so with the magic number of $300, what do these additions come out to? Total for this deck, Shane, with the $100 and the $300, we're looking at $303.87. So I am a big fat cheater, but not by much. No, that's, you know, three bucks. I'll give it to you. And of course, we'd like to say a disclaimer at the time of recording a lot of these cards in these decks have seen price fluctuations, so if you see them at a reasonable price, pick them up. So do you have any final thoughts or anything you'd like to say about this deck before we end it? I mean, kind of like I said on the $100 list, right? So this deck is pretty much concentrated on your graveyard. And <laughs> to be an Abzan, white, black, green, it is probably pretty amazing. I mean, this is a really great color combo to get stuff into your graveyard search for stuff, I mean, ramp. It kind of has a little bit of everything, which is really amazing. Uh, this deck is really fun to play. Uh, I hate the fact that I got it just because the last deck I upgraded for the Lord of the Rings was a graveyard-themed deck. But to be honest with you, it's kind of fun. Yeah. I mean, like you, you, you have said it many times, and you can quote a lot of our videos. Uh, Shane, my favorite thing you say is free stuff for free is great. Yeah, I, that's not wrong. And we'll make sure next next round, Stephen, you will not get a graveyard recursion deck, I promise. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I probably would want it at this point. <laughs> All right. And with that, guys, that'll be the 300. Please leave, us, leave a comment for Stephen. Let him know if you liked his upgrade. Maybe you missed a card. Leave a comment. Let him know. We love hearing it. We love reading it. We love learning. Also, while you're down there in the description, you'll find a link to this. So if you want to check out the Mox field, Click it, play it, build it. It's great. Also, while you're in the description, you can check out all of our socials. Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. It's all just going to be at Guys at Magic. Drop us a follow there. Make sure you subscribe to Guys at Magic. Like this video if you liked it. And until the next video, take it easy, guys. Bye. Bye, guys.